Uh, first, I just want to say I, I, I truly, truly appreciate all of you in the media for your coverage on this. I cannot tell you how instrumental that is on a case like this, and I really appreciate uh, you bringing this to everybody's attention and you putting it out there in the forefront because it's, it's certainly very important to us and it's important to the community. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, we've been monitoring a lot of the social media activity and we've been paying attention to the special interest groups and the true crime groups that are all following this as well. And I certainly want to want to thank them for their participation in this and uh, keeping this out in front. Uh, first thing I need to do is I need to dispel a rumor and that rumor is Noel has not been found. He is still missing. Um, so I want to be very clear on that. I know that rumor has been going around on social media quite a bit and that is not the case. He is still missing. Uh, give you a little bit of an update from what we've got last night, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions as we move forward. So last night, our investigators were able to recover a vehicle that was located at DFW Airport. It was the 2012 Chevy pickup that was listed in the initial Amber Alert and the Endangered Missing Persons Alert. That vehicle was taken to a secure holding where investigators were able to conduct a thorough search of that vehicle. Uh, among other items located in the vehicle, our investigators did locate an electronic travel visa for one of the children. That visa indicated that it was obtained on March 21st, one day after the welfare check. The visa also indicated that the travel was to India. In addition to that, our investigators have been in contact with Homeland Security and we were able to confirm that that flight did travel to Turkey first and then from there on to India. So at this point, we're still waiting on final confirmation on the passenger list to India, but we have reason to believe that the family has traveled back to India. Um, I need to explain a little bit of the living situation here and the, and the dynamic at home. Um, as many of you have, have uh, seen this morning, you've seen our investigators and our teams out there this morning at the residence conducting some searches, and I want to make sure that we're clear on the living arrangements there at the address. This family resides in the backyard of a home that belongs to an elderly gentleman. The elderly gentleman has been highly cooperative with law enforcement. He has granted us consent to search the property. He has put forth all the information that he knows and he has been cooperating with investigators 100%. Uh, so we're very appreciative to his cooperation. Um, our investigators and teams were out there this morning and are still out there now conducting a thorough search of the property to try to locate any evidence, any signs of, of uh, what may have happened to Noel or where, where he might be. Uh, we did, just to check a box, we did have cadaver dogs come in today to search the property. That was just to make sure that we're covering our bases all across the board. Um, and those cadaver dogs did not alert onto the property. Um, again, we don't have reason to believe, there's no evidence to suggest that he is deceased. Uh, but we are checking all of our boxes and making sure that we are as thorough as we can possibly be. Um, this search that they're doing today is actually a secondary search of the residents. Uh, officers are recovering several documents. We're looking at receipts. We're pulling any and all information we can possibly pull to try to locate Noel. Um, last thing I want to make sure that we, we talk about is uh, that the tips that are coming in are extremely, extremely helpful. I mentioned earlier about how media keeping this out in front. Is, is certainly imperative on a case like this, and we want those tips to keep coming in. Uh, we've, we've received a lot of other information coming in, and we're, we have investigators working on those. Um, this case has, uh, has uh, really prompted a lot of uh, other law enforcement attention from federal law enforcement agencies and state law enforcement agencies, and so we've been able to cooperate with them and uh, get their assistance, and we're looking forward to, to seeing if that may, that may take this case a little bit further. Um, outside of that, to date, I, I, I still don't have, we were hopeful that we would have some physical evidence. I still don't have any physical evidence after those searches today, um, but we are going to continue moving forward as, as best as we can. So with that, I'm gonna take your questions. So I'm gonna share with you, there, there is a rumor, and I wanna be very clear when I say this, very, very clear. This is a rumor that we have heard and, and we have no evidence to support this rumor. The rumor is, is that this child may have been sold. Again, we know how this goes with social media. Um, we, we don't, I don't wanna sit here and speculate that this child is, is deceased, but it is a distinct possibility that the child may be sold. And if that is the case, again, your participation in this and keeping that kid's face out front and center where people can see him on a day-to-day -day basis is, is highly important here. 
he could be anywhere. So it's hard to speculate that, that you know, whether, whether he's dead or alive, to be quite honest with you. Um, I tend to be an optimist. I'm going to believe that he's alive, and I'm going to keep pursuing this case to the best that we can to try to find him. So. We have had some um, we have, have had some family that have reported seeing him more recently. However, we've been able to disprove those statements. So the last statements that we've been able to prove and the last sighting of him is still November of 22. We, yeah, we're still we're still trying to look in on whether they were being deceptive or not. But um, I do know that that was the statements that came in, and we've been able to disprove that. Yeah, I was going to say our person of interest right now is mom. I mean, we, we need to talk to mom. Yeah, so we're not going to name any other step step relative or any other relatives that might be living here just yet. Um, we have had a lot of co cooperation from the family. So let me, let me be clear there. We've just been able to disprove some of the statements. Now, whether those statements were intentionally deceit or not, we don't know. We're still looking into that. Uh, we've got probably no less than, than 30 different investigators looking at this case from, from all different aspects between local, state, and federal partners. Um, so we, we've got a lot of ground to still cover as we, as we look to unravel all this. Well, as of, as of right now, we don't have a criminal offense against the family, right? So, so our first step is to try to figure out what happened to Noel. Uh, once we find out what happened to Noel and we're able to determine if a crime was committed or not, and a crime was indeed committed, then at that point we would work with our federal partners to find out what options there may be uh, to bring them back. But again, that's, that's, that's further down the road and that's all speculation on even if a crime did, was committed. Yeah, the father has actually been very cooperative with us. Um, he has been on uh, calling us regularly to try to get updates on the on the investigation. Um, he has expressed concern on the whereabouts of his child, and um, you know he, he's obviously been deported, so I I don't think that he has any custodial rights. But but we are investigating and looking at all options there. Is, yes, we've been meeting with several different family members um, face to face and, and talking with relatives about the case. And, and for the most part, almost all of them have been have been highly cooperative. So. Yeah, so let me and I know that's a common question that keeps coming up. So the, the alerts that were sent out when we investigated this case, this case is, is very unique. The circumstances are very different from the majority of other cases when we have missing kids or abductions. Uh, so as we investigated this case, we worked with the Texas Fusion Center. There are certain guidelines that are put out in order to issue those alerts, and those requirements have to be met. And working with the Texas Fusion Center, the circumstances surrounding this case were so unique that we decided to push through with the Amber Alert and with the Endangered Missing Persons Alert, even though it didn't meet the criteria the case was so unique. So in order for that to meet the criteria, those dates that appear on the form are not the accurate dates in accord and in the ones that we've put out on all of our press releases and so forth, those are the accurate dates and times. Yeah, the, the original source didn't come directly to us. It came through CPS, so I don't have that information to give out. I do know that it was told to CPS that they wanted to remain anonymous. Well, and, and that's what we're doing right now. We're investigating all possibilities right now. Nothing is off the table. Um, you know, we, we don't have any evidence to support one direction or another. So we are truly investigating all possibilities. And we're doing that through very, very meticulous investigative uh, 
task. I mean, we, we, that's why we're out there again today conducting a more thorough search of the property. That's why our, our investigators are looking at everything from receipts to forms they may have filled out. Uh, we're attempting to collect uh, um, all kinds of other data and working on the vehicles. I think we've had some se several crews, crews out there today and you saw us tow off another vehicle today. Again, that's just us being as thorough as we possibly can on this investigation. That vehicle has had no relation to this investigation so far, but we've got consent to search it, so we're gonna search it. We're gonna do everything we can. We're trying to leave no stone unturned here. And uh, our federal partnership has been great. Um, they've been helpful, not just on, on that potential front, but on every front. Uh, we've been working with Homeland Security and they're working to verify all the information on the travel for us. We've been working on uh, with with uh, Customs and Border Protection on the status of the of the father and what can we do to to try to improve the communication here. So um, you know the partnerships are great, but it, it, we are investigating where Noel is, and that means that we're not going to leave any stone unturned, and we're going to keep going every avenue we can. Sure. Sure, so yeah, we've been working with all the area hospitals and we do have some medical records and we are continuing to get more medical records coming in. Um, I have not had a chance to review those medical records, so I don't have any dates prepared for you today as far as when the most recent trip was uh, or the most recent uh, evaluation was. Um, but we, we are cooperating and the, and the hospitals are cooperating with us and sharing all that information. We're looking at all that. Yeah, I mentioned that yesterday. So I, we can't go into specific details regarding previous cases, but what I can tell you is that there have been previous investigations and there has been prior action against the mother as a result of those investigations. But that's the most that I'm able to, to release. She was the custodial mother of all seven children at home, yes. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's extremely necessary. I mean, that is the only lead that we're going to get right now unless something else turns up from these searches. But so far, we haven't got anything. I mean, we are coming up empty-handed on, on every aspect that we traditionally go for as law enforcement. Um, and we're, we're turning to the public, and we really are pleading. If you know anything, and we've been getting calls all day today, uh, people who have known the family over the years, people who may have seen this child, you know, three, four years ago, people uh, that went to school, with a mom. I mean, we've, we've had a lot of different tips that come in and we want those. We need those in this case. Um, and I said yesterday, I don't care how long ago it was. I don't care how small you might think it is. We want to know because it's going to be that one small tip that comes in that's going to snowball into, into a much bigger, bigger break for this investigation. Sure. So we're looking at, um, I'm assuming you're talking about if, if the child was sold, right? And we're, and we're playing a whole lot of ifs and, and wins and, and so forth. And I, I really don't like doing that. But certainly if that was the case, we'd be looking at human trafficking charges and, and other, other potential uh, neglect charges, abuse charges, those sorts of things. Um, we have not. So we will work with our federal partners to make that connection and work with him over there. But we, we as far as the Everman Police Department, has not been in direct contact with him. We don't, we don't know that yet. I don't have confirmation on the flights. We're waiting on confirmation from Homeland Security on whether they were on the flight from Turkey to India. All we have is the visa that shows and indicates they were traveling to, to India, and we know that the plane was going from Turkey to India. I don't, I don't have final confirmation just yet that they were on that flight, and I don't know the exact destination in India. I'm sorry. I'm not, maybe I'm not, why who? Why he has primary custody? Sure. Yeah. So there's no documentation to show that he can't be in custody of the child. There was nothing to support that he couldn't. There was nothing prohibiting him from being in Mexico with his father. Um, and it was certainly a very plausible uh, um, statement that she made that he he was in Mexico with his father. Um, you know, and it, it's certainly believable, and there was no reason to doubt. The, the officer that was on scene uh, was able to 
able to take a look at the home and take a look at her and, and have a conversation. She she was providing uh, phone numbers and contact information and so forth with the law enforcement officer. So there's no reason to doubt what she was saying until investigators were able to make contact with the father and he denied that claim. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to, to specify on that, but. You know, I'll tell you, we've ex we have we are exploring that. I just don't know what the possibilities are right now. But we have thought about that and are exploring that as a possibility and trying to converse with our CBP partners on that. Yeah, they've been cooperating, and as I mean, and initially, as, as all this started, they're the ones that, that provided that information and confirmed that they haven't seen them since November as well, in addition to the anonymous tip. So uh, the majority of the family has been cooperative with us. Um, we are continuing to follow up with the family as best as we can and try to try to pull out any additional information that they may have that, that would be helpful in this case. How long will the I, no, I, as far as I know, I believe that search is still ongoing. Are they still out there right now? Yeah, that search is still ongoing right now. So, um, you know, we'll search it until we're satisfied that we've located anything in that house that may be of use to us in this investigation. Well, and, and I want to use person of interest very, very carefully because, again, we don't have a criminal offense here yet. Um, we don't have any physical evidence of a criminal offense. Is he involved and in, in do we want to talk to him? Absolutely. Um, but uh, I just, I, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be very careful about person of interest from, from my end. Um, yes, we do want to talk to our Steve. We would love to talk with our Steve. Uh, we would be hopeful that maybe he has additional information that he could share with us that would lead us to know all. So, absolutely. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say again. Yeah, so they do have five-month-old twins together. He is the father of the five-month-old twins, so I would imagine that they've been together for at least 14 months. I, I don't know about any relationship beyond that. That I, I don't have that information readily available, but I'll try to get that for you. When searching inside, have they cleared out? Yeah, so we are searching inside, and I, and I, I can tell you that, no, they have not cleared out. Um, the house is still has a, the majority of their property in it and things, so there's no... There's no signs that they've cleared that out. Is there anything that suggests that the Welsh people would not cross the border or that the house is either way? You know, I, they're still searching, so I, I don't I don't know the answers to that just yet. I thought it was No. No, he has not been enrolled in school at all. And can you locate the, the connection to Turkey? I'm sorry, to India? To India, yeah, we, we believe so. So he is an immigrant from India, yes. Yeah, it was actually, it looks like it was a shed, a pretty large shed that was converted to a living space, a single living space in a shed. Um, and yes, all nine of them were residing in that single living space. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I'll try to get that for you. Any other questions? Sure. No, I appreciate it. And again, you know, we want to keep this up front. The public help and, and your help on this has been very instrumental. So as we get more information, we'll be sure to pass it along to you. Uh, the big thing is, is, is Noel's still missing. So the more we can keep his face and name out in front, the better. And I appreciate your help on that. Yeah, we'll probably do another briefing at 3.30 tomorrow, um, just so I can provide, again, any other updates. And I know that everybody's got questions. Keep in mind, too, we're a small agency. Um, you know, I've only got 18 people on my staff within the police department, so I try to be as responsive to my emails as I possibly can. I've been out in the field all day long with them, with the boots on the ground, so I try to be as responsive as I can. If I don't get to you right away, please accept my apologies, but we will try to get this information out to you as quickly as we can. Yeah, we're getting assistance from Tarrant County, Forest Hill Police, um, Fort Worth Police has been helpful. Arlington Police has been helping out, us out with some of the media equipment and things out here. So, um, you know, this this isn't just an Everman Police situation. This is obviously all law enforcement working together. So.
Well, I got to be very careful about how we're allocating resources. I mean, I, you know, we, we don't have any reason to believe that, that Noel would be anywhere else right now. Uh, if we found any sort of, uh, of evidence that he may be elsewhere off the property, absolutely, we will search that um, and we'll expand our search out. Okay. Um, I don't have that answer. I know the investigators did talk to him, but I don't have that answer. All right. No, not by city code. It is not. Yes. All right. The mother, Cindy Rodriguez Alvarez. Yeah, Cindy Rodriguez Alvarez. Singh. I'm sorry, Cindy Rodriguez Singh. Uh, yes, it's A R S H. D E E P, all one word. Last name is S I N G H. No problem. All right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it.